Testing one, two, three. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. sing and it was this count your many blessings name them one by one count your many blessings to see what God has done yes. and it will surprise you what the Lord has done and this morning on Thanksgiving Sunday we want to count our blessings we want to remember the good that God has done for us in this past year Amen. and kept us safe and sound and healthy and well amidst all the turmoil and so we're thankful for that. And this morning I would ask that all of us would rise and we will do our worship declaration together. Jesus. Oh Lord, send your anointing, move by your spirit, heal and deliver, have your way in my life individually and in our lives collectively. Glorify yourself and show yourself strong as we worship and praise you and open our hearts to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, Sister Nicole and Brother Diego will come. They're going to read scripture and they're also going to open in prayer. Brother, brother Sister, come. of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from the time forth and forevermore. <laughs> from the rising of the sun until the going out of the same, see, from the rising of the sun until the going out of the same, the Lord name is to be praised. Yes. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heaven. Who is like unto the Lord our God? who dwell on high, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and the earth. He rises up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out and lifted the needy out of the downhill, that he may set him with princes, even with princes of his people. He made the barren women to keep house and to be joyful mothers of children. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This morning is so good to be here. It has been so long. Yeah, since we have been together to worship the Lord. And I just want to say a thing about, you know, we as the man in our family, we are the priests of our home. Yes. And our wife is our backbone when we are sliding back, you know, feeling down. Our wife comes and, you know, tell us, be strong, motivate us, and all of that stuff. But it's so good that we have to learn that we are the priests of our home to Jesus Christ. So we can, you know, when our family is sleeping, we are up. Praying for our family because God put us in charge Amen. of our home. So there's no slackness in prayer, you know. So this morning, I want just all of us to pray. Pray for our province, pray for our town, pray for our family, and just pray. You know, I pray that the Lord will give us boldness to pray together in Jesus' name. Yes. Just pray. Lord, Jesus. as we come to you this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, O oh God, to be with us, O oh God Almighty Jesus. 
I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will come in us and empty out everything that is not of the Lord that is within us. That the Holy Spirit of God will manifest himself within us. I pray, oh God, that you will deliver us from evil. Deliver our minds from the stronghold of the enemy. Help us, oh God, to walk according to your will. So our host, oh God Almighty, will be straight. I pray, oh God Almighty, that every one of us, oh God Almighty, will stand on your word each day and every day. And we will spread your words beyond these walls in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be bold about doing it. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen us wherever we go and be with us in our going out and our coming in. I pray that the Lord, oh God Almighty Jesus, will continue to make our hosts have peace and joy and happiness. And our children will be delivered from the hand of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, and at this time we'll turn the service over to our worship team. Hallelujah. We're so thankful that we can gather together in this fashion, Thanksgiving Sunday. So, you know, the Lord has been good to each and every one of us. So, from a heart of gratitude, let us just offer our worship and our praise to Him. Amen. <laughs>
we thank you for your goodness, not just when it's Thanksgiving, but we thank you at all times because of your goodness towards the children of men. And we bless your name, O God. Jesus.
tahun.
for a moment. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you that you are such a loving God and a Father who cares and who supplies all our needs according to your riches and glory. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Amen. Thank you for the beautiful worship service this morning. And at this time, with no further ado, we'll turn the service to our pastor, Pastor Raymond Moore. Thank you so much, Brother Ellen. Lord bless you. Greetings to all the saints of God, those that are here, those that are watching online. And uh, for most of us, maybe all of us, we have heard of uh, the tragedy of on the uh, the fall family and so it's weighing heavy on our hearts today it's weighing heavy on my heart and we're going to take some time today to lift them up in prayer hallelujah i can tell you that um, what i had planned has been uh, altered has been changed but i just commit that into the hand of the lord and pray that the lord will have his way among us today it's good to see you again after not having service for two weeks and uh pray that you've been refreshed and you took some time to feast on the word of god through some Avenue, whether it be through reading or from just connecting to another ministry and just keep feeding your spirit. Jesus says, my word is spirit and it is life. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Pray that in the midst of the craziness that is going on, you will have a great Thanksgiving time with your family. And uh, as Christians, we don't uh, we don't limit our Thanksgiving to God to a weekend. Amen. We live a, a life of Thanksgiving perpetually. We should. The Bible says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer." And supplication, thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. And so we give God praise and we give him glory. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of, the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Uh, I say revelation and maybe some of you think right off the bat, oh boy, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> you may even think to yourself, I'm going to preach on end times, but I'm going to disappoint you, I'm not. Revelation chapter 19, we're reading from verse 11 of Revelation chapter 19. And as you read, picture the, the imagery of this context. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. 
and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. We sang about that this morning. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Verse 14. And the armies in heaven, clothed in white linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. You want to know who that army comprises of? The saints. Angels will be there too, but clothed in white linen, that's the saints. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Verse 16, and last. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. Say it with me. King of kings and Lord of lords. I'm going to read that verse again, and you're going to say that part with me one more time. Amen. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. One more time. Three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't plan this. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen, somebody. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your great love in which you have loved us, a love that is unconditional. We can't do anything to make you love us more or anything to make you love us less. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And oh God, today we give you thanks for an act of love that was accomplished more than 2,000 years ago. Today we come together and we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. Thank you, God, for bringing us here today to worship you. Thank you for those that are online. Father, I pray today as I stand to minister your word, let your word go for today with power and with clarity. Holy Spirit, take full control and let me say nothing more and nothing less than what you would have me to speak. I give you all the praise, all the glory, and the honor. And the saints of God says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. In the month of September, flowing into October, the nation of Israel celebrated some very important holidays, the Feast of Tabernacles and Sukkot and Yom Kippur and, and different things. And I was very touched by one of my morning devotions that the Lord would have me take a little bit from it and expound on it and share with you. I will be sharing a few scriptures with you this morning. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohino Melech Ham Oloma. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohino Melech Ha Olam. For just about every time when a Jew, a Hebrew, would pray, they would, be, would begin their prayer by saying, Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohim, Melech Ham Olam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. 
for them, it's a, an introduction. Almost doesn't matter what they're going to pray about. Doesn't matter what the subject matter is. They approach God. Barukata Adonai. Elohinu. Melek. Ham Olam. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Amen. They want to make it known through their expression that they know who they're coming before. When we go before God in prayer, how do we approach him? Do we know who we're going to in prayer? He's not an elected official. He's not my foreman. He's not my supervisor. He's not a brother. He's not Justin Trudeau, or uh, actually I wouldn't go to Justin Trudeau, really, you know. <laughs> He's not a government official. He's not the head of the United Nations. He's not the head of NATO. He is the king of the universe. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. Amen. That's the God before whom we go in prayer. Amen. He is the king of the universe. Amen. We're not talking about somebody who owns a couple acres of land. We're not talking about a prime minister who's governing a country and he's just governing a country. He's elected. Or if it's a dictator, he's just leading by force and, and he's not going to be there for all time. We're not talking about the, the, the prime minister or the president of a country. No man has claimed or can claim ownership of this world. No man. Hitler tried to conquer much. The Roman Empire tried to conquer much. The Grecian Empire tried to conquer much. And they can only conquer so much. No man can claim ownership of this planet. And yet here in Revelation, we have our God stepping back into his own creation. And quite frankly, he's not very happy. The imagery that you see. His eyes are like a flame of fire and a robe dipped in blood. And on his robe, and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I've entitled this message today, King of the Universe, but also a Father. He's the King of all creation. He is Lord of all. In Psalm 47, Psalm 47, I want to share with you what it declares in Psalm 47. Hallelujah, blessed be your name, O Lord. Psalm 47, it says, Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all, somebody say all, oh. amen, over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. That's what we were doing here this morning. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy 
throne. The prince and double people have gathered together the people of the God of Abraham for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. I didn't have the scripture in my, in my message here, but I just want to jump over briefly to Psalm 50. Psalm 50 and verse 7. It says, Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your foes. For every, every, hallelujah, every piece of the forest is mine. I've never heard someone make such a claim. I mean, they can, they got free speech, but how dumb and ridiculous it would be for someone to claim ownership of every beast of the field. How ridiculous it would be for someone to claim ownership of this planet. It would be ridiculous, right? It says every beast of the field is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills, I know. Not only God says they are mine, but he says, I know all the birds of the mountains. The wisdom that it would take to do such a thing. I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine. Amen, somebody. And all its fullness that means, all its fullness means, and everything that is in or on this earth. Here is a God who can declare, for the world is mine, and everything that lies therein. You can't really give God anything that doesn't already belong to him. Does that make sense? Amen. What can we give that you have not given? What do we have that you have not already owned? Have you ever heard anybody claiming ownership of this world? Uh, I've never, like, I've heard people claim the ownership of land millionaires, billionaires, they can go buy a little island and they can claim it and whatever, but really and truly, it's not theirs. Push come to shove and government enacts emerge, state of emergency, all that you have belongs to the government. You think you own it, but you don't. The government really wants it, it's theirs, and there's nothing you can do. So you can even claim it's yours, and it's just really words. But here, it says, for the world is mine, and all that dwells therein. John 1, verse 1 to 3 declares, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. Colossians 1, 15 to 17 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Hallelujah. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Barukata Adonai. And you know, Melech Ham Olam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. He's not only King of this planet, but He's the King of all planets. He's the King of the stars. 
and the galaxies and every matter and autumn and whatever. He is the king. Things that are visible and things that are invisible, what we can see and can't see. The Bible calls him the king of the universe. That's the God in whom we pray or to whom we pray. That's the God in whom we trust. Amen, somebody. He is big. He is grand. He is awesome. He is not or cannot be compared with any other. We place none above you, God. We place none beside you. For there is none who is equal like unto you. He is the king of the universe. Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man, hallelujah, that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you should visit him? You know, sometimes we think we're the center of attraction and on and on. But here comes the psalmist, and the psalmist is very humbled in, in light of the universe, in light of all that God has made and the grandeur of it all. And he got to himself and he looked deep within himself and he's and analyzing the, the circumstance, the context, the situation, and all of creation. And he said, the sun, the moon, and all that you have made. Earth, I remember watching this documentary and it was showing Earth from how many light years away. Or if you were to be on Mars, one of the rover from Mars looking at Earth, and Earth is a little tiny dot. In other words, if I were to take this pen and make a little tiny dot here, you wouldn't be able to see it. But in the context of the universe, that's Earth. See how tiny we are? In light of all that God has made. And there are many galaxies. The grandeur of his creation. Some says, what is man that you are mindful of him? Not just man, but in, in light of the earth. You, you wouldn't be able to identify a little dot on that wall that symbolizes or signifies earth. And yet, that's where we are. That's what we live on. And there are planets that are millions, billions of times bigger than this earth. So in light of all that, the psalmist says, what am I that you're even mindful of me? God, God, you can just, you can be fully occupied doing all the things and taking care of the universe and watching over all that you have made. What am I that you're going to take such time out, such intimate, personal time out to come on that little tiny dot to dwell there, to be like us, so we can have a relationship. He is the king of the universe. Amen. Our God is big. Amen, somebody. Amen. He's grand. He's huge. The Bible says he spreads out the heavens like a curtain, like a tent to dwell in. <laughs> he's high and lofty. In fact, he's downright awesome. Amen. <laughs> but don't let the size or the distance of God discourage you. Mm. Don't let the size or the distance of God discourage you. Because though he is so big, Yet he has made himself so small. 
so that we can relate to him. Be happy for that. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. One of the things I love about creation, you will not see in the act of creation that God has made anything in his image and in his likeness except mankind. Of all that God has made, you will not see the label, the significance, the importance that they are made in his image and in his likeness, except you. So I say that to say this, as grand and as big as the universe is, and that God is the king of the universe, he has treasured, he has prized a little tiny planet called Earth and some people that live on it whom he has made in his image and in his likeness. And therefore, though he may be the king of the universe, he has chosen to be the father of those who he has made in his image and in his likeness. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness, hallelujah, of man, not a cow, not a bird, no, 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 we are made in his image of man and being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of a cross therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every somebody say every every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those Isaiah 
57, verse 15 and 16. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. Think about that for a moment. Who inhabits eternity. If we were to say someone inhabited time, Adam would still be here. Because ever since time began, he's been around. And this dude just won't die. He's like Methuselah. <laughs> but here the Bible says, he inhabits eternity. The Bible says he is without beginning or ending of days. He's like, he's like Melchizedek, so to speak. In terms of, there is no beginning. In, in Revelation it says, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What? Who? What? When? When did that was began? Oh, we can't figure that out. And who is? When eternity stepped into time through Mary's womb. That's the is. Who was? And who is? Came into time. And he went back to heaven and says, I'm coming again. And who is to come? For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit will fail before me, and the souls which I have made. Psalm 138, verse 6. Psalm 138, verse 6. Though the Lord, hallelujah, get a glimpse of this. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. But the proud he knows from afar. So let not the distance, let not the grandeur of the bigness of God discourage you. For though he inhabits eternity, and though he is so big, though he dwells on high, yet he regards this little tiny planet that I put a dot. We live on there. And he regards the lowly that lives on that little tiny dot in the context of the universe. There are much bigger planets. There's some crazy stuff happening out there, but this planet, the Bible says, God who created this world that it, we inhabited. I don't know what's wrong with us. We want to think now we're going to go inhabit Mars and all those other planets and we're wasting millions and billions of dollars trying to find water. So what? Okay, and if we find water, what's next? Are we going to transfer half the population of Earth to Mars? Look at Earth compared to Mars! It's a dry desert! See how messed up we are? Look at planet Earth, how beautiful it is. Go to Jasper and the mountains and the glaciers and this place. God created this earth for us to inhabit. Amen. And everything is perfect. The atmosphere in terms of breathing. And even if there's water on Mars and whatever, if you go up there, you can't live there like you live down here. You're going to have to be covered in all kinds of stuff because you are meant to live there. And all that wasted money that the devil is causing people, NASA and all of them to use to go there, we could rid this world of starvation. We could rid this world of starvation. But the Bible says Satan is the god of this age. And he's corrupted, he's blinded people's minds. It's all about greed and money and different things. Hallelujah. Though he's on high, he regards the Lord. How is it that this great and awesome God, who seems so out of reach, 
in the context of the universe. But he's not. It may seem like he's out of reach, but he's not. He has not made himself beyond our reach. King of kings, Lord of lords, and he has not made himself out of reach. What is man that you are mindful of him? In light of the universe and how big it is, and God is taking care of all the galaxies in the boxes, he called the stars all by name. He calls them by name. He has not made himself out of reach because this king has humbled himself so he can be our father. It isn't, does not blow your mind. The king of the universe. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the sun and the moon, the stars and all that you have made, who am I? What am I that you care so much about me? That this king would even humble himself to the point of dying on a cross for me. The psalmist said that before the crucifixion. Could you imagine what he would have said after the crucifixion? After the king became a man to die for man. You see, kings don't die for their servants, for their peasants. Guess what? It's the other way around. That's why you have cupbearers. Because <laughs> in the days, the number one way they take out kings and whatever is through poison. That's why they had cupbearers. That person's gonna take a drink of a king's wine first. If there's anything wrong with it, then the king will know. So you're gonna die for the king. The king don't die for you. But not our God. Not the king of the universe. Hebrews 4, verse 14 to 16. See in them. See in them. We're going to bring this home in. And this scripture, when I read this scripture, I think, I think so much of the falls. Hebrews 4, verse 14. See in them that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Who has passed through the heavens. Let me stop there for a moment. I think I've shared this before you that based on scripture, there are three heavens. Some people might want to say there's a lot more, but I don't know. You have to break that down real good and show it to me. But the Bible says Paul went to the third heaven and saw things and heard things that is not lawful for a man to utter, 2 Corinthians 12. He went into the presence of God. So if Paul went to the third heaven, we are gonna, um, we're going to assume, reasonable assume, that there is not or cannot be another heaven higher than where God is. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Because he's the highest, he's the greatest. So Paul went to the third heaven in the presence of God. So if there's three, there means that means there is a two and there's a one. So heaven two is where you have the universe, the galaxies, the sun, the star, the moon, and Jupiter, and Venus, and all. That's heaven two. And heaven one is from where from this earth to where gravity ceases to exist. As long as you're going, going, going. And if you stop going, you'll fall back down. That's still heaven one. If you burst that barrier and you're now into outer space, now you're in heaven two. So that, does that make sense? So for the king of the universe who dwells in heaven three, who passed through the heavens, down through heaven two, down to heaven, heaven one, right into the womb of Mary. And on the Mount of Olives, when they stand there, 
and they saw Jesus going up and a cloud came and took him. They said, two men appeared to the disciples and said, ye man of Galilee, why stand here gazing up? This same Jesus who you see going up will so return in like manner who has passed through the heavens. Hallelujah. The high priest was passed through the heavens. Let us, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We're talking about the king of the universe. God was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of, somebody say boldly. Boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. I don't know about you, but even talking about this right now, my heart is just overwhelmed. That this grand, awesome God who has created everything, all the stars and the galaxies and everything can sympathize. And not sympathizing based on his omniscience. There's a difference. Because the Bible says God's omniscience is that he knows all things. There is nothing to be known that God does not know. He just knows everything. But in this instance, it's saying we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points. Why? Because the king of the universe became a man and experienced everything that you and I will ever experience. When Judas, not Judas, when Lazarus died and Jesus came on the scene, the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. And they said, wow, see how he loved him? Jesus had just lost a friend, a dear friend. You will never experience betrayal like Jesus did. You will never experience denial like Jesus did. You will never experience temptations like Jesus did. You will never experience abandonment like Jesus did. The same people who said, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, were the same people, some of them, a few days thereafter, that said, crucify Talking about the king of the universe who has made himself a father. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. You need to be. You, let, let me remind you that God does not need you. Right? God does not need you either. He is the king of the universe. He is God. God doesn't need me. But he says, all things were created by him and for him. He created me for his glory. He created you for his glory. And the king of the universe has made himself a father. 
He could have been distant. He could have stayed distant, roaming in heaven three and roaming in heaven two. And he could have kept his grandeur. The Bible says God dwells in inapproachable light. Unapproachable light. You know what that means? God says to Moses, no man shall see my face and but yet God humbled himself in such a way that he talked with Moses, come on now, face to face as a man does his friend. We're talking about the king of the universe translating into being a father and how amazing that is. Something will take a lifetime to really comprehend. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. We'll read the scripture real quick. Psalm 146. Oh, hallelujah. Bless your name, O oh God. Psalm 146. And we're going to have a prayer. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no hell. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. How is he who has the God of Jacob for his help? Whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps true forever. Would you not want to know that your help comes from somebody that's that big? Who made the heaven and the earth? We're talking about infinite power. Infinite wisdom at your disposal, at your side, ready to help you. Blessed is the man who has the God of Jacob for his help. For the arm of flesh will fail you. Maybe not willingly, but just circumstance, and they're limited. But not the God of Jacob. Who keeps true forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. We're talking about the king of the universe. It, it, doesn't that? But he says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 28 and 29. Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16 says, Can a woman Forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb. Surely they may forget. Listen to this question translated in modern times. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget. How many times during summers? We hear unfortunate news of parents 
you know, running into the grocery store and they forget their baby in the car. And sometimes it's strangers have to come to the child's rescue. Sometimes it's unfortunate the child dies from the heat. God is saying, that's not very likely to happen. A woman, the son of her womb, can she forget? Can a woman forget the nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? It's not likely. If it happens, it is very unnatural. But God is saying, yes, it can happen and it does happen. Because we're human, we're human. Hallelujah. Yet, I will not forget you. Amen. Wow. God says, even if the mother forgets her nursing child, I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you Hallelujah. On the palms, not palm, palms, both. On the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. We're talking about the king of the universe. The king of all kings. The Lord of all lords. Who has made everything as much as your eyes can see around you and the skies above and on this little tiny planet called earth where you and i live in relation to the the big the grandeur of the universe we're like a little tiny dot and that's where we live on a planet called earth the king has valued those that dwell upon that planet so much that he has inscribed you on the palm of his hands. He has not ascribed Canis Majoris. He has not. That's another planet that's a couple million times bigger than planet Earth. He's not inscribed Jupiter. He's not ascribed the sun, nor anything else in this universe, but you. He has ascribed on the palm of his hands. Amen. Is he worthy of your love? Amen. Is he worthy of your worship? Amen. Is he worthy of your praise and your adoration? Amen. Yes, because he didn't have to do any of that. That's how great the Father's love is for you. Amen. Our God the king of the universe has availed himself to be your friend, your best friend. Isn't that amazing? And even better than that, the king of the universe has availed himself to be your father. This imagery and revelation of Jesus Christ returning. Bob doesn't show him returning to Venus, Jupiter, in one of those planets. The Bible shows him returning to Earth from the Mount of Olives where he left. Riding on the white horse, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the other verse from that, in verse 17 of Revelation 19, Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings. He's king of kings. The flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. 
the kings of the earth gathered together to make war against our God. He's more than a friend. He's a father. And so when the Jews, then they come to pray, they recognize who they are approaching, that he's unlike any other, and they give him the reverence and the awe and the adoration that is due his name. The Rukata Adonai. Elohinu Melek Ham Olam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Not O Lord God, but our God. Relationship. O Lord, our God. King of the universe. When you approach him, don't lose sight of the fact that he is creator, he's king of the universe. But also don't lose sight of the fact that though he's so big and grand and awesome and powerful and majestic and all those other things that he has made himself, he's humbled himself to the point where you can become his child because he has availed himself to be your father. And thus Jesus taught his disciples when you pray, do not be like the Pharisees. Think they will be heard because of the multitude of their words. But you go into your closet, and close the door behind you, and this is how you pray. Come on. Abba, Father, who art in heaven, ha, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Throughout the life of Jesus, he always said, my father in heaven, I come to do the will of my father. My father, he's always saying, my father, my father. But it got to the point where Jesus said, now, this is how we want to pray. Our father, he said, pray to your father. And so the transition happened that he's not just Jesus's father, but Jesus said, he's also your father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word today. Reminding us of who you are in your grandeur, your splendor, your majesty. You are creator. You are king of the universe. You are king of all kings and lord of all lords. But in the midst of that, you have humbled yourself, became a man, so that we could relate to you, so that we could experience that the king of the universe is a personal God who desires to have a relationship with his creation, for his creation to have a relationship with him. And you have opened the door for us to call you more than a friend to call you Abba Father Lord many of us we may not have had the greatest experience with the earthly father to really understand the, 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 the vastness the ramification of this the importance of this but I pray Holy Spirit that you will open our eyes to see what it is that you're calling us to that place of relationship with you O oh God you're not distant Yes, you are big, but you have made yourself so small to fit in our, to be right here with us in our hearts. Jesus, I am going away, but I will not leave you as orphans. I will send you the Holy Spirit who is with you, but he will later be in you. God, for that we love you and thank you. Oh, 
grace. Teach us how to approach you as a true father who cares about us. For if a son asks for fish, would an earthly father give him snake? And if a son asks for bread, will the earthly father give him stone? If you be an evil know how to give your children good gifts, then how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? Father, we thank you that we can come boldly to your throne. Even like a prodigal son, we can come back home because of your great unconditional love for us. So for that, we bless you and thank you. And that was all made possible through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So even at this season here on earth in Canada that we have set aside to call Thanksgiving, we thank you, not just because of the season, but in spite of it or in a in an agreement, in alignment with it, we say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you. Amen. Amen. Please, uh, please bear with me for another five minutes. We're going to do something here. I'm going to get you to uh, make you a little, going to disrupt your comfort for a moment. We're going dis to disrupt your comfort for a moment. So I'm going to ask if... I'm going to ask if we could just stand up for a moment and just move out of our seats. We're going to try and form a circle. We're going to try and form a circle and let's try to stay together as, as families. We're still going to try the social distance. If it's not working, then some of you can move a little closer to the chair and some of you can move a little further away from the chair. But you can, you can come all the way up here a little bit too and form all the way around the back. We're trying to make a circle. We're going to lift up a fall family in prayer. Yeah, yeah. you, you guys can spread out. Spread out around the back there, too. We're trying to make a circle. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, some folks can come more this way. Yeah, that's okay. Just uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. No, we got a big gap over here. We got a big gap over here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. As I said earlier, maybe many of you don't know what's happening. But the fox have lost their son. And not just the fact that they've lost their son, but the tragic event through which their son was taken from them has added extra hurt and pain. A very challenging time for them as a family. And we just want to lift them up in prayer. First Corinthians, or second Corinthians, pardon me, chapter two. Verse two, chapter one, verse two. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord. Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, hallelujah, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Sometimes
sometimes we have a better idea if we've been through a certain experience ourselves to understand what someone is going through. But even experiencing something very similar, you still don't know what they're going through. Their pain might be a lot deeper. Because normally it's a bunch of other things that's happening simultaneously.
we commit them to your care. We commit them into your hands, Father God. Lord, we declare, let no weapon form against them. Prosper in the name of Jesus. We bleed the blood of Jesus Christ around the faults. We bleed the blood around their homes in the name of Jesus.